Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Raymond Young. Here are tonight's top stories. Civil servants are set to get more pay after a two-year freaks. North Korea drafts military medics for COVID battle amid confusion over infection data. And Sweden and Finland defy Russia by formally seeking NATO membership. Senior civil servants are in line to receive their biggest pay increase since 1997. This comes after the Pay Trends Survey Committee recommended increasing civil service salaries by between 2 and just over 7 percent. Joanna Hall reports. Relief is in sight for Hong Kong's 180,000 civil servants who have not received a pay rise in two years. This comes after the Pay Trend Committee surveyed 111 private companies employing a total of 130,000 people in the past 12 months. It is found that lower-ranked staff had a pay rise of 3.2 percent, and those in the middle brackets received 5.58 percent. Staff in the upper salary band took home an extra 8.3 percent. The government uses the net pay trend indicators in the survey and factors such as the state of the economy and the cost of living to decide on salary adjustment for its workers. After deducting the cost of increments, the salary for junior civil servants could be raised by 2.04 percent. Those ranked in the middle could get 4.55 percent, while senior staff may get 7.26 percent. A civil servant in the upper band with a starting salary of $74,515 could get an extra $5,400, taking the monthly total to almost $80,000. The raises are the highest recommended since the handover in 1997 and come after two-year freeze because of the pandemic. Pay Trend Committee Chairman Li Lun Fai said although the economy in the first quarter of this year was affected by the fifth COVID wave, overall growth last year was fine. So to me, it's a correct and accurate uh, uh, figures. So we accept that and then uh, after the next week, we will confirm uh, the, the whole thing and then we'll present to the government. The committee will meet civil service unions before finalizing the proposals, which will then go to the executive council, which will have the final say. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. New COVID cases in Hong Kong rose by one from yesterday to 329 including 31 imported infections. Local clusters continued to expand, with six additional cases taking the tally in Shenhuang's Sky Cuisine restaurant to 70. The cluster at the Imperial Kitchen in Kuantong also rose by 6 to 26. Three new infections were reported from the Tam Jai Noodle Eatery in Tongchong, on top of three from yesterday. Another four patients died from COVID. Center for Health Protection Controller Edwin Cho said the daily caseload will fluctuate after some curves are lifted, but assured that the percentage of serious cases is still low. Mystery continues to shroud the COVID situation in North Korea, which said more than one million people have recovered just one week after reporting its first outbreak. This comes as the World Health Organization expressed concern about North Korea and Eritrea, two countries which have not launched vaccination campaigns. WHO has no special powers to intervene in a, in a sovereign state. Um, it would be uh, clearly of interest to surrounding states and other states to work with uh, both countries to encourage them to take the action necessary to protect their population and by extension protect populations in countries around them. North Korea mobilized military medics as it declared war on the virus. After its leader Kim Jong-un accused senior officials of not responding fast enough, Pyongyang said hundreds of thousands of patients recovered from suspected COVID. Adding to the confusion, North Korea said there were 230,000 new cases of fever and another six deaths. Almost 700,000 people remain in quarantine. 
Casino mogul Steve Wynn has been accused of acting as an agent for China. His lawyers denied the allegation, which centers around a fugitive businessman wanted by Beijing. Chloe Fong reports. The U.S. Justice Department is suing casino tycoon Steve Wynn to force him to register as an agent for Beijing. He is accused of urging former President Donald Trump, at the request of Beijing, to cancel the U.S. visa of a Chinese businessman or deport him. The man had left China in 2014, before he was charged with corruption and had sought political asylum in the U.S. The Justice Department said Wing acted to protect his casino and hotel business in Macau. He is alleged to have conveyed the request directly to Trump over dinner in 2017 and by phone while trying to arrange a meeting between U.S. and Beijing officials on behalf of the Public Security Ministry in Beijing. The department said the casino magnate had been advised to register under the Foreign Agents Registration Act three times but refused, with the latest just last month. Wing's lawyers denied the charge, saying he had never acted as an agent of the Chinese government and so does not need to be registered. The 80-year-old billionaire stepped down as chief executive of Wing Resorts in 2018 over sexual misconduct allegations. The Chinese businessman linked in the case against Wing was not named, but is believed to be exiled billionaire Guo Wenghui, who is wanted by Beijing for financial fraud. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. Sweden and Finland have formally applied to join the Western Defense Alliance NATO, despite a threat by Russia to retaliate. Every nation has the right to choose its own path. You have both made your choice of the thorough democratic processes. And I warmly welcome the requests by Finland and Sweden to join NATO. The two Nordic countries decided to become part of the world's biggest military bloc after Russia invaded Ukraine. Moscow has been trying to stop NATO from expanding further, but appeared to score an own goal when it attacked its neighbor in February. Meanwhile, Russia released a video purporting to show Ukrainian soldiers leaving the Azovstal steelworks in Mariupol after being trapped for weeks. About 1,000 men and women reportedly surrendered and were taken to Russian-controlled territory. President Joe Biden has condemned white supremacists in the United States and accused them of being domestic terrorists. He also denounced the so-called replacement theory used by extremists to spread racial fear. U.S. President Joe Biden and his wife Jill visited Buffalo in New York State to honor 10 black people killed by a gunman last Saturday. After meeting relatives of the victims, Biden lashed out at white extremists and labeled the massacre in Buffalo as domestic terrorism. White supremacy is a poison. It's a poison <laughs> running through. It really is. running through our body politic, and it's been allowed to fester and grow right in front of our eyes. The president when denounced extremist propaganda smiling, aimed at frightening whites into thinking that they will lose remember, their rights to immigrants. A hate that through the media and politics, the internet, has radicalized, angry, alienated, lost, and isolated individuals into falsely believing that they will be replaced, that's the word, replaced by the other, by people who don't look like them. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell condemned racism, but took aim at the government. What I'm disturbed about with regard to the southern border is the relative openness of it. Uh, this administration's taken a number of steps in the direction of just throwing our border wide open once again and that ought to be addressed. The city of Buffalo was shocked last weekend when a man with a semi-automatic rifle opened fire, killing 10 people and wounding three in a black neighborhood. 
Police arrested 18-year-old Peyton Gendron, who pleaded not guilty to murder. Locally, the director of online media outlet Passion Times says National Security Police ordered him to delete sensitive content on his website. Wong Young Tat, who is also the founder of the Civic Passion Localist Group, said on Facebook that officers went to his home and office and issued notices that set a deadline for him to remove certain material. Wong said he remains free and safe, adding that he will continue to host his program on the website. A verdict on a traffic accident that killed five people four years ago has been pushed back for one month. Family members of the victims arrived in West Kowloon Magistracy this morning before the prosecution in the coroner's court asked for more time to examine witness accounts in detail. In December 2018, an empty school bus careered down Cheng Hong Street in North Point, killing five passers-by and injuring ten others. The driver was summoned for not properly applying the handbrake. Chinese gaming and social media giant Tencent has reported its worst ever quarterly performance since going public. The Shenzhen-based company posted revenue of 135.5 billion yuan between January and March, barely unchanged from a year ago. This represented Tencent's slowest quarterly growth since 2004. Net profit at 23.4 billion yuan was down 51% year-on-year. China's economic slowdown and a freeze on new game licenses weighed on its business. Tencent shares in Hong Kong dropped 0.8% ahead of the results announcement. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng ended the day up by 41 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Tencent lost $2.80. Meituan was down by $1.70, while Alibaba was down by 55 cents. The tracker fund was up two cents, while AIA was up 55 cents. The forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, the euros at 8.26, pound sterling at 9.75, and the Australian dollar at 5.51. Over in Europe, the London FTSE is currently down 15 points. The mainland property market remains bleak, with new home prices in April recording its first monthly fall in five months. Prices in 70 cities fell 0.2% last month, compared with zero growth in March. But year-on-year -year prices rose 0.7%, the slowest pace in seven years. In a bid to revive the property sector, the central bank has cut the minimum interest rate for first-time home buyers. This comes as COVID dampens buyer confidence, especially in smaller cities. That's our main news for Wednesday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Raymond Yang. Thanks for watching. Good night.